So euphemistically, I titled this uh, in, the, um, in the summary as everything I, I, I learned about plugin support I learned in an operating room. So I'm a surgeon, and what I found is traditionally I find family members and other people not too dissimilar from your users who ask you questions at a time in their life when they are confused, vulnerable, scared, and they just have a million and a half questions, and sometimes they don't even know what the questions are. But they know things aren't quite working right, and they have issues about that. And so you have to kind of sit back and take a deep breath and listen to what they're saying and hopefully get them to a point where they can understand what's going on. Now, in the day job, it's a little different because you have to convert the really technical into stuff that's not very technical because uh, you get all sorts of people um, with all sorts of very involved uh, issues. And you kind of have to distill it sometimes. So I, it, some of it was really easy. You know, I'd have somebody who came in a car crash, and you'd go and talk to the family, and the first thing I'd tell them is like, they're going to be fine. Okay? It might take a while, but they should be fine. Now, those were the easy conversations, because you can lead with the good stuff. Bad stuff takes a little longer and it gets more detailed. And you have to kind of figure out everything along the way. The, uh, so I wrote this plugin, GitHub Updater. And it's not in the repo um, for reasons, and that's fine. And so I don't really have any great way of judging how many people use it. Anybody here use it? All right, I've got one. Um, what it does is it basically, uh, if you have plugins that are outside the repository, either on GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab, it will allow them to update through the admin dashboard, just like any plugin in the repo does. Oh, you're, you got to move that a little bit. Other corner, somewhere. It, that's how I'm kind of judging how, how much interest may be in it. Um, just to kind of give you a, a, a basis or just a breakdown, Gutenberg has about the same number of, of stars on it, though it got there a lot quicker than I did. Um, and so the, uh, what I can tell you about doing, um, uh, writing plugins and, and stuff, I wrote this because I needed it. It was something that I could, I found useful, and you know what? If ever anybody else can find it useful, great. Um, <sighs> if anybody else can find it useful, great. Oh, by the way, hi everybody in the other area. <laughs> the um, I keep changing and iterating and, and doing all sorts of things with this, and maybe that's good, and maybe that's not so good because. You know, you can have issues and problems. And one of the few things I've I found is I really keep doing that, Jonathan. I, you know, I really hate white screening people. But you get to the point where it's like, we talked about imposter syndrome in the last thing. It's like, oh my God, can I really pull this off? And the answer, you know, as <laughs> as a surgeon, I will tell you one of the euphemisms we speak of is is sometimes wrong, never in doubt. Because you know, they're you're the captain of the ship in the operating room and people expect you to make decisions. Now, you make decisions, they're not always right, um, but you make them and, and you live with them and your patients live with them. Um, the, I, I don't really have a, <laughs> any sort of classic computer science education, at least nothing you would say is something like that. Um, and so every time I get to the point where I'm about ready to release something, I probably leave it in develop branch for a lot longer than it needs to be. Um, just because I'm worried about doing something to someone's site. I mean, everybody else, you know, most people out here, you guys make a living doing this, and, you know, I don't want to screw with that. Uh, I really don't want to interrupt it. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, in a hospital, in an operating room, I I've never had an imposter syndrome. 
it's like, you know, you get to the point where you, everybody has their own little niche and they know what they're doing and they know where they are. You know, you get to a place, you know that. Everybody's an expert in their own little area. And there are things that you will speak to with authority at the drop of a hat. And nobody will question you. Well, they may not question you just because you're speaking with authority and everybody kind of tends to, to look at that as you know what you're talking about. It's also helpful if you actually do. But the, uh, it, when it comes to code, it's a lot different sometimes. So I always worry about those things. And so it, maybe it's a sense of caution, but I tend not to release it as often as I probably should. You know, there's a couple of changes and fixes and things that I've done. I mean, just recently I, I converted the little small amount of JavaScript that I had into it from using jQuery to using vanilla JavaScript because there was one time when the jQuery library didn't load and trunk. And I'm like, wait, what happened to the way the settings page looks? It's like screwed up. And so it's, I don't know, JavaScript. It took me all day to Google out and figure out how to change things. But you know, you change them one thing at a time and eventually you figure it out. Google is your friend. The, um, I had a heavy dose of imposter syndrome hit recently in, um, in, in, tr in uh, it actually wasn't even trunk, it was in uh, the .org repository. One of the things I have in the plugin is that if your plugin also resides in .org, it will preferentially take the .org versioning and update it against .org and not update it against GitHub or Bitbucket or et cetera. And they recently changed the way the plugins API returned the value of, is your plugin in the repo? And it used to print out this nice long uh, array back with all the data from your plugin. And if it wasn't in the repo, it just gave you a null. And so I was checking against the null. And recently they fixed it and said, you know, this isn't, very, this isn't what we should present. We should present an actual error. So they changed it to present an actual error. Well, the problem is I was testing against the null. And so because it had data that came back, or more specifically because the way I wrote the code, it wasn't returning, it wasn't returning a null variable or empty, it saw every single plugin as being in .org. Consequently, if it didn't live in .org, it wasn't going to get updated, including my updater. So, all of a sudden, I'm thinking, oh my god, what am I going to do? And so I wrote a bunch of posts, and I put an issue up on the page. And I said, OK, because of this issue, I need you to, everybody who's using it, I'm going to need you to update you know, in one of these methods. And, and fortunately, there are methods that would update it in place. It wasn't just download it and reinstall it and stuff like that. Um, but I did something better. I, I got on Slack, and I talked to uh, Dion Hulse, who's the uh, component maintainer for the upgrader uh, and installer. And I said, hey, you know, I know you changed this, and I appreciate it and understand it, but it kind of broke one of, my, it, one of my issues. And, you know, even though my plugin isn't on the repo, I do test against it. And he was wonderful. He backed out the changes and said, you know, I can just make a 1.2 version of the API. And so now everything works again. And I was really happy. So I don't know if anybody has been following 4.9.3 from WordPress. They had a very similar issue, where all of a sudden, automatic updating was not functioning. Now, fortunately, it didn't really go out to that many. It didn't go to another any other branches other than Trunk and 4.9.3. And it. Um, It showed up, I blame myself for it. Because it showed up in my logs and I kept seeing this. I'm like, what's going on? Because always, if you're, if you're testing, turn on all your debugging. Check your logs, see what your errors are, see where your errors are interacting with something else. Because there's lots of stuff you will see that the plugin still works. You just don't, you know, you just won't see it. You won't see the, the PHP notices that are there. You won't see the, in this case, a PHP fatal error. 
that showed up in my logs. And I say I, I take some blame for it, because I saw it like a week or so before the 4.9 release. I didn't say anything, and, uh, and it just so happened that I'd mentioned it in Slack the day 4.9.3 went out, and it was like, oh my god, was the response. And needless to say, they kind of mitigated it pretty quickly and worked with hosting companies to fix an update where necessary, but to anybody who hasn't updated from 4.9.3 to 4.9.4, do it now. I'll give you some time. But anyway, as I said, I, I kind of blame myself, but it was because it was the same sort of issue that I had run into the week before. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I kept sweating about, well, how am I going to get everybody back onto, onto, to, onto the right version where they're getting updates? I mean, after all, this is an updating plugin. It's supposed to work that way. So always, always turn on your debugging. Always check with your debugging. Always check your logs. It's very, it's, it's you, uh, I've had users tell me they, they see this in the air and like, I don't see it. Now sometimes it's just their setup, sometimes I don't see it. Um, but it's always in there. Be nice. It's the, kind of the golden rule. Yes, sir. And? Okay, I'll just rest it on my chin. Why not? That works. Um, wow, I can hear it now. Um, be nice, as I started to say from the beginning in the in the in the uh, in the intro. People are coming to you with issues. They're scared. They've got uh, they've got their product. In this case, they've got their their product, their plugin, their theme that they need to put a fix out to somebody to their users. This is their business and their livelihood. And all of a sudden, something's not working. And it used to work. And they don't understand why it's not working. And so you just got to be nice. And you kind of, you know, as, as it says there, you know, treat everybody like you'd want to be treated. Who here's missed an airplane flight? You ever gone to the counter, you go to the connection thing? You know, the, where they, they, they reroute you and reschedule you in the, in the uh, terminal. I remember I missing an air flight, airplane flight. I was in Dallas. And I'm like, my own fault. You know, I, I just come back from a long trip. I plugged in. First time I got in decent Wi-Fi in like two weeks. So I started to do some stuff. And all of a sudden, wow, well, there's a gate change. There's not just a gate change. There's a terminal change. And I got the, on the tram going the wrong direction. Everybody been to Dallas Airport before? Yeah. This will really screw you up. Because all of a sudden, there's you're not five minutes out. You're 25 minutes out. So I finally got to one of the um, ticket counters. And I'm just standing in line. And I'm, I'm on my way home, so it was OK. And I'm listening to these people just yell and scream and be irate with these agents. And you know, the agents are, hey, this is their job. It's, you know, it's customer support, right? They're trained. Be nice, be cordial, do what you can. But let's face it, we've, we've all gotten support requests. And when people are pissy, you're not going to get to them right away. Because what do you need another dose of pissy for? And so I was listening to these people just yell and scream like it was the airline's fault that they missed their flight. Well, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. In this case, I knew it was my fault. So I get up to the counter, and I said, how can I help you get me home? <laughs> because you know, that was all I was interested in. And you know, it, it takes on a whole different demeanor when you start from the premise of being nice to somebody and not having to come at it from, you know, you're my enemy kind of thing, or you did this to me. They didn't do that to me. I did it to myself. You know, if you miss if you miss the flight because the other flight was like, well, you know, they didn't do it to you. You're talking to this person here who's trying to help you out and trying to connect you and trying to get you to the next place. Tech support, same way. All sorts of questions. They're just trying to get you to the next place, get you to your little happy spot where everything sort of works again, or at least works like it's supposed to. <laughs> 
be patient. I have to work on that. Because everybody's like, you know, you're, you, you, you're in a rush, you're in a hurry. Um, you, nobody takes it, you know, you, you have to take time to respond. You have to take time to listen. Uh, and sometimes I have to ask questions and get back to people. And then I have to realize it's not a race. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times someone reports an issue. I'll but fix 10 minutes later. Hey, can you tell me whether it works back on your end? Hour goes by, day goes by, week goes by. Okay, I, you know, I look at it as like, I finished it. I, it works on my end. I assume if it doesn't work on their end, I'll hear something eventually. Sometimes they get back and, you know, life happens, right? They're busy. Something else takes precedence. And they'll either get back to me or, you know, if it's a month later, I'll just, you know, I'll close out the tissue and say, let me know if it's not working. Um, but it's just, it, everybody's, everybody has different priorities. So their priority in sending you the ticket may not be the same as yours in fixing it. Or after you fixed it, getting a response back. This is a global community, and it's amazing to me how many people are, you just can't interact with at the same time because you know they're asleep when you're awake, and you're awake when they're asleep. So sometimes you get built-in waiting. Uh, and so it's okay. The other thing I've learned is learn to say no. Uh, learning to say no, no is a lot harder to say than saying yes. Uh, and saying yes can cause all sorts of problems sometimes. We all talk about scope creep. And sometimes people have great ideas. And sometimes it's just worth saying, you know, you can go on GitHub and fork this and add that issue and add that, you know, feature that you think is absolutely wonderful back. And oh, by the way, if you do and you get it working, hey, send me a PR so I can look at it. Because if it works out well and, and I, it, it is what I want, I'm happy to, to, to put it back in. Um, something, <laughs> I had something in here, sometimes uh, learning to say no. I, I had this one kid who was, you know, tragic act, well, it wasn't really an accident, tragic accident, shot in the head, okay, brain dead. Those are bad conversations. Big family in our ICU literally had to call the police three different times to have them come because they were unruly. At, at one point, they asked me if I could do a brain transplant. And <laughs> you can't laugh. I mean, you know, they're, they don't, they don't, you know, this, this goes into the, the people don't understand the, the technical issues. I mean, you know, Mary Shelley aside, they don't, they don't, it's, and, and yeah, you think about these and you, you hear that and your initial thought is, wow, that's really silly. But you can't let them know that because they're hurting. I mean, all they know is something really bad's happened. Uh, the, uh, and as, as for scope creep, sometimes scope can change over time. Sometimes you will find that, uh, things are better. I mean, uh, you know, the whole overriding.org that got me into that issue was both me playing, trying to play nice and someone who asked for it. Uh, and it was just, it seemed easy to, to create. And the method of creating it changed over time because, you know, I found a better way. But it, it was within scope that it, again. Um, be open to other ways of doing things. One of the other plugins I write is a uh, spits out CSS. And I can't tell you how many questions I've answered about, you know, you select two of these things and it's going to create CSS for each one. And you got the same selectors, except for there's one little class that's different. And so the last defined class is the one that's going to get hit. And so you can't do both of them. And that would be my pat response for years. And someone said, well, what if you just didn't define that class for that? I'm like, hey, let me give that a try. So it's in the develop branch. It hasn't been pushed yet. But it was right. I mean, it doesn't, things don't quite line up right. But you, know, you can now, it's the category colors plugin for events calendar. 
and you can now set a different you know different category that just has a background and a different category that just has a border and if you have both those categories selected wow you get the border for one and the background for the other um sometimes you don't understand anything ask for help it's a big community everybody everybody's more than willing to help you uh, you just have to kind of wait for it because sometimes it'll be on their time and and sometimes it's not uh, there are certain uh, features of the updater plugin that wouldn't have gotten developed if i hadn't had help um, being able to work with bitbucket server uh, being able to upgrade against a webhook um, are all those issues uh, recently, I've got someone who's doing a PR for Gitea. Anybody ever heard of Gitea? It's another Git repository something, self-hosted. Uh, we're getting closer, so. The best thing you can do if you're doing support is build a community. Because I don't do Facebook, I do Slack, I do Twitter. One of the greatest things is when your users are helping each other. I can't tell you how, you know, you get the great warm feelies when, you know, I log into Slack and there's like three messages or five messages and it's two users who are basically helping each other with the problem and fixing it. The, uh, so I'll really need to do that. Pay it forward. Work with other plugins, other repositories. Now you're going to have to move it over somewhere else. <laughs> These are all on uh, WP Tally. You get plug in a username, you'll get the list of everything they're, they're listed as a contributor on. Did I write all these? No. Did I contribute to all these? Yeah. You know, this one, I helped make it multi-site compatible. This one, probably a bunch of you read. I, I seem to have inherited that. Um, again, didn't work in multi-site. If you wanted to, to use the beta tester in a multi-site, you had to go to the one of the branches and turn it on, essentially. Uh, not you couldn't do it through network install. Same thing with I don't know. I think that was it right now. Oh, hide SEO bloat. Sorry, Yost. Um, also, didn't didn't work under uh, under multi-site uh, cleanly. But most of them, you contribute code, and it's amazing how how many people will download and use your code. It's more amazing that you get core updates and core things uh, put in. Because uh, then it's not just, you know, half a million people using your code or downloaded your code. It's, you know, 30% of the web. So to summarize, <laughs> you're on top of that. I like it. Uh, to summarize, you know, do your best to help people. Create documentation. I, I, I've told people, you know, it, it's amazing. You, you put up the wiki, you put 12, 15 pages up there with all sorts of examples and, and descriptions of why you need to do it. People still don't read it. They, you know, it's like I, I have to ask for, to see what their repo is, to see where it is, to see, hey, you know, it, you need to add this header to make sure it actually works with the plugin. And, you know, some people just haven't added it yet. But since you can actually install a plugin without the header, they think it should just work with it. I haven't built that part yet. Support your whoops. Uh, support your code. You know, if if you want it to keep doing and keep living, you, you got to support it. Otherwise, there's you're just not going to happen. Um, if you want people to contribute, make your code readable, document it well. Always develop with debug true, and pay it forward. Contribute to everybody else. Uh, that's it for me. This is me. Um, I blog very rarely here. <laughs> um, that's me at work. My son took that for a class project, right? Um, you can find all my stuff at uh, afragment at uh, GitHub. Yep. <laughs> Some of it's what customers are asking for. Some of it's, uh, if I think it's a, if I've added a new feature, I'll pop a, a not, you know, minor release. If it's just a patch, it's you know a patch release. Um, if it's just fixing something, if it's uh, 
Oh no no I I I, I if I don't think that it belongs in the in the in the plugin, I, I won't put it there. I I literally I mean, you you can kind of tell when I do that when I say, hey, you can fork the project over on on GitHub and I'll give them the URL to it, and make it work however you want. You know I'm here. I'll give you a great starting point. Um, yeah, I'm a recovering trauma and acute care surgery. I'm, I've, as I said, passed over the dark side. I'm now in hospital administration. That's really weird. Um, any other questions? Did I lose anybody? <laughs> no, I. You know, it's it, it was. You know, it's really funny. Every once in a while, I will get a. a I've gotten a couple requests. Hey, can I hire you to fix this thing? You know, something with a CSS and a plugin. You know, it's mostly a theme issue, and I put a bunch of hooks in to kind of fix it. And every once in a while, I'll just write their filter hook so that it it works for them, if they tell me what it is. And one one group said, "Can we hire you?" And I'm like, um, "Honestly, you you can't afford my hourly rate." And they're like, no, seriously. I'm like, no, seriously. Y y that was my avatar for a while with the surgeon. And they think, oh, we just thought you were like a code surgeon. I'm like, no, no, real, real surgeon, blood, guts, all that good stuff. And then I never heard back from them. And here I was, you know, I wrote the plugin. I was ready to try and fix their problem for free. You know, may not have been on their time frame, but, you know, never heard back from them. No, I, I you know. I like it. I enjoy it. That's why most of my, you know, almost all my stuff is open source and free and whatnot. At least to this point. I'm sorry, sir. No, I'm not ready to quit my day job yet. I changed my day job, um, but I'm not ready to quit, quit it quite yet. Any other questions? Any questions from the alternate room? Yeah, I, I'm just kidding. I can't see you guys. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Enjoy lunch, everybody.